Hey folks, I'm Jeff Hirsch, and in today's video, we'll take a look at the improvements Adobe has made to the metadata functions in Lightroom Classic. So what's metadata? Well, metadata is all that information that gets recorded about how and when and where your photo is taken. Aperture, ISO, shutter speed, date and time, GPS location, all that stuff is saved as little bits of information along with the picture itself, and we call that metadata. There's a couple of pull-down menus I'd like to direct your attention to in the metadata pane. The first one is this darker one at the top here. That lets us display different sets of metadata in the window below. And this slightly lighter one down here lets us pick from a metadata preset we might have created, like one to apply our copyright and owner information on a picture. So you can use this top pull down here to display different sets of metadata information that might be relative to your needs at the time. Right now we're showing the EXIF metadata. So what's EXIF? Well, EXIF is the name that was given to a standard that a number of Japanese electronics companies agreed to somewhere back in the mid 90s when they were putting out consumer digital cameras for the first time. So EXIF is the exchangeable image file format and it's a way for them to embed along with the picture data things like date and time and the camera settings make and model and aperture and ISO and even the orientation portrait or landscape along with a little thumbnail that would allow that file to be viewed on the back of the camera or in an image browser. So that's one view we have. One view is of the EXIF metadata. Those are all the things that are part of that standard. Another set we can display is the IPTC set of metadata. And you'll see that there's a lot more fields there that we can populate. Well, so IPTC is the International Press Telecommunications Council. And what they did is they expanded on EXIF by adding a lot of metadata that's relevant to photojournalists. Captions, locations, headlines, uh, descriptive text, all sorts of things that you would want to be able to add beyond just the basic shooting metadata. Eventually, that got folded into something that Adobe created called XMP that's now the ISO standard for multimedia. So you've got all these different views that you can switch between EXIF and IPTC and one that will show you a rather large caption if you'd like to write a much longer descriptive text to go with it. But what's improved about the latest version of Lightroom, what they came out with in Lightroom 11, is in the default view, you can click this button at the bottom that says Customize, and you can make the default view show whatever sets of metadata you would like it to show. So let's hit the Customize button, and up comes a window with all the basic information, file name and base name and extension and size and the path or folder that it's in. There's camera information, shooting information, GPS coordinates, IPTC content, captions and headlines, things for publishing, copyright and rights usage, creator information. So you get to choose, there's keywords, video information, you get to choose which of these things you'd like to, sh to show in your default one. So I have it showing me if there's a sidecar file or not. I'd like to know if there's an XMP coming along with my DNG file or my CR2 or my NEF. I want the file name. I don't need the file type because the file name is gonna tell me what type it is. I want the folder that it's in to show. If there's a caption, I want the caption to show. For camera information, I want the dimensions of the original shot and the crop dimensions. I want the camera. I want the exposure compensation because I use exposure compensation a lot. So I want to make sure that that's showing. I've got the focal length and the lens choice, exposure and ISO. If the flash went off, exposure program and metering mode, but you can choose to turn on or off any of these as you see fit. Because I have exposure and ISO as a single line, 1 320th of a second at F8 at ISO 100, I don't have to individually take up space with the aperture, the f-stop, and the shutter speed because all of that's included in that exposure information. And then I've turned on, of course, capture date and time, copyright, copyright status, the creator, my, you know, my name, of course, in these pictures. 
And so, as I mentioned, you can hide or display any of these by checking or unchecking any of the boxes. But also down at the bottom here is a button that says Arrange, and it'll allow you to actually reorder the fields. So you can see in this case, if I wanted to move the folder up underneath the file name here, I save that and I come over to my panel. Now I have the file and the folder and it's above now the sidecar. And if I want, I can move that sidecar below the date or the dimensions. You guys get to arrange that however you would like. So I really like that feature a lot, the ability to customize the default display. There's a couple of more cool things I want to show you. They have added this tiny little sort of eyeball icon right here. And if you click that icon, it'll switch to the edit only mode, which means that only editable fields will be displayed. So things that you can enter, like a caption or a keyword or a description or something, those fields will show up in all the other fields, the shooting information, aperture and shutter speed and ISO, those won't show. So let's click on that. And now, the only things I could change would be the file name, the title, caption, copyright, copyright status, and creator information out of this particular view. So I've hidden all those other ones. And if I click this icon again, I can see all of the ones that are listed. Let's switch from the default view to the IPTC one. And here you'll see there are quite a number of fields we could fill in. And if I click the little eyeball, it's going to remove some of the ones that are automatically filled in already leaving us the ones that we can then fill in. So that's kind of cool. You can switch between displaying all the fields or just displaying the editable ones. And then the last thing I wanted to show you that they added is sort of a new wrinkle here is if you're holding more than one picture, let's say I've got, you know, four or five pictures in a row here, you have the option to display the metadata from all of the photos or just the target photo, the one that's the most active. So if you look at these photos, I've got four of them selected, but this first one is the active or target photo. So that's the most active one. And I can switch the view from showing me the metadata from all four of these to just the one that's highlighted there out of all of them. So you have the ability both to display them that way and to edit them that way. That's a nice touch. So that's all for the new additions to the metadata panel in Lightroom Classic.